I was incredibly disrespectful on the emergency pod yesterday. I was just going off the top of my head. And I was running through all these open jobs, just trying to do a little status check. And I ignored our friends in Bloomington. Just completely forgot wow. about it. One of the biggest, one of the biggest announcements of Sunday, Tom Allen out. And look, I, I heard, I heard from Indiana fans, the internet was working in Indiana. They were not distracted by their blue blood basketball program. No, no, no. They were ready to say, hey, what about us? So I bring that. Where, Tom, where does Indiana go from here? First of all, I'm not surprised that you ACC homers would completely forget that there was a firing <laughs> in the Big Ten. And yes, I'd, I'm happy that you're finally coming to realize that there are Big Ten fans and they do get kind of angry online. Um, I was surprised. Like, I thought that this could be coming based on just the fact that Indiana had not been good at all the last few years and like kind of all the mojo from that 2020 season had long dissipated but there was the 20 million dollar buyout that was looming over everything and just historically indiana has never been the program that was like we will swallow a pill that size to make sure that the football program can kind of rebound and at least get back in the right direction again the so, bleachers are falling apart all mm -hmm. right like i I've, I've not seen investment but I mean, I think this is clearly a sign that now that the Big Ten is going to 18 and you've got a billion dollars a year coming in, because like this is this is an interesting situation. I'll get to Indiana specifically in a second, but I want to start bigger picture here in that we have seen conference realignment and what it is doing. The Pac-12 is gone. As of right now, the little guys that were just in these conferences already in the SEC, the Big Ten, Big 12 are getting to stay. At some point, we are going to reach, and we are seeing this in the ACC right now, the point where you have to pull your weight financially or they're going to kick your ass out for somebody else. And I'm wondering if Indiana is kind of smart enough to realize that and looking at the future saying, we need to start putting more money in this football program or they're going to kick us out for somebody else, whether it's Kansas or another Big 12 school or another whatever in the future. So I think this is a sign of that potentially for Indiana in that it is starting to take football seriously and not to the point where it's like, we're going to win the big 10 and get to the playoff, but at least where we are going to try to be a bowl program year in and year out. And we're not going to accept bad results. So they negotiated the buyout down to, I think 15 million instead of 20. So now it's only the third largest buyout in the history of the sport. So congratulations, Indiana, <laughs> but it's, it'll be interesting to see where they go. There are, you know, John, like I said, John Gruden is clearly the favorite for the job. It's his if he wants it. The offer is out there. He is mulling it over. But, like, it's going to be interesting to see how this job looks, where it fits with the open jobs. Because it's a Big Ten job, so it's going to have plenty of money. But will it? it's not the most desirable of the jobs that are available. It is going to be very tough. It's easier now that you don't have to play Ohio State, Michigan, and Penn State every year, but you're still going to be getting your head caved in by a tough schedule every single year, no matter what in this league going forward. So what do they do? It's kind of like a Duke situation. Do they want to go for the young up-and-comer, up and or do they want to find somebody more established to kind of just build a foundation and get going in the right direction? I don't know. I, I know Indiana fans would love it if Ryan Grubb, the offensive coordinator at Washington, who – works under Caleb DeBoer and was at Indiana with Caleb DeBoer when he was the offensive coordinator there because that's when they were last having fun in Indiana football. They have their hearts set on him. I think that would make sense. You mentioned Tommy Reese for the Duke job. I've heard Tommy Reese's name mentioned for Indiana. I don't know if that's where the school is looking to go, but it could make sense. He's familiar with the – he grew up, you know, in, in suburban Chicago. He played at Notre Dame. He's familiar with all the area. But it's – I have no idea where they're going to go but it's going to be an interesting situation to follow. And I'm actually optimistic if I'm an Indiana fan that it's happening. I, uh, 20... I... Go ahead, Dan. No, I was going to say 2019, I think, was the year I went, covered an Indiana game. Covered 2020, too, but it was COVID, so we didn't do it in person. But Kalen DeBoer met with him, and Kane Womack met with him as well. If you wanted to go with somebody with ties to Indiana. Now, he's at South Alabama. He did have a good year two years ago. They were 6-6 six and six this year. But those ties, I think... what. What style works? Like, is this one of those places where, I mean, if there was ever a perfect option to do the option, triple option, somewhere like that, like this is the perfect kind of fit because you're not going to be able to stack up to, you know, go toe to toe with the four and five star recruits. You're going to have to face with the bigger schools in the big 10. 
Kansas is running the triple option right now. They just call it something different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, We've had 30 full seasons, so not the COVID year, since the sport went to 85 scholarships. Like, that's a pretty clear line of demarcation for me, right? It, 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 because it, cu- it cut you down. You couldn't hoard quite as much talent. The talent should be spread around more. Indiana has made four bowl games in the last 30 years. Mm-hmm. Four. Like, this idea that they're going to be going to bowl games every year is is not realistic because the Big Ten is get. I know they're getting out of the East, but the Big Ten is getting harder because all four teams that you brought in are much better than you are. Like, even when they're down, they're still way better than, than whatever your best is. But, like, I read Zach Osterman a lot of the Indianapolis Star. I think he had a really good hot board, and he had a, a pretty good column today explaining, like, all right, here's some of the investment they've made. Here's some investment that they, they are still planning to make, need to make. And, yeah, I, I was like, okay, why are they doing this? And it does seem like the AD there cares about uh, cares about being good at football. I think Tom's point is really good on this. Uh, the problem with the triple option is that the fans don't like watching it, right? Now, could you get to bowls more often if you ran? I do think that what we said about Mississippi State has to apply here. You need to run something that people are going to be like, think it's a pain in the ass to prep for you. You need to probably be able to upset, like, not an Ohio State or Michigan, but like a decent team in the league that doesn't take you seriously. Hmm. Oh, sorry, guys. I don't know what that Burner. Is. So, is oh. that a big buy? Was that yeah. somebody just placed There's a big on the SEC championship yeah, I, game? I, I, found, I found a way to pair my phone with my computer now, and now, now it rings. Okay, great. So, even though I got my, f- my phone muted. Circle limits just went up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you know what? The, you know what? Limit this, increase. You know what this job needs. Until we get things straightened out, a hey, coach, I would do this too. You guys could all be on my staff because I think you could all make things work financially. What's the going rate for an Indiana head coach? Six million a year? Five million a year? I would say five at this point. Yeah. All right, I'll do it for two, and I'll take three million. And I'll put that towards the roster, and and I'll I'll buy a roster that can be somewhat competitive, and my staff will have to take a little bit of a discount too. There's another million, you know, spread out for whatever your staff allotment is. Let's go buy let's go buy a roster and make it work. Like to me, this is the type of program that you would have to do that because I because I mean look, I, I've said it the other day on uh, on Thursday or whatever day we did the pod about you know Indiana's quarterback was using that game as a free agent. He's already entered the portal. Like, how do you keep a guy like Soresby, who's shown some flash? You can. Good this year, yeah. You know? I mean, totally. Like, what What if you went and got, like, like Tim Alvin at Ohio or Chuck Martin at Miami, Ohio? Guys who are, like, proven they know what the heck they're doing. Like, they're exceedingly competent in the Midwest. Tim Alvin makes 700 k Right. Jeez. You could triple that guy, pay him, pay him two, you know, and be like, hey, we're 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 gonna get we're gonna get some players. Like you, you'd be better than Rutgers pretty quickly, I think, if, if you did that, right? Like, would you rather have have players and a two million dollar Tim Alvin, or would you rather have like a seven million dollar Greg Schiano and Rutgers players? I know what I would take. I get it. I do wonder why it hasn't worked as clean. Like, why why can't you do that? Well, maybe why can't you do that is the same reason why Quinnen Williams said he picked Alabama over Auburn. It's because he went to the facilities and he mm-hmm. saw who was there and he saw who was on the walls and he knows that he wants to go to the NFL and the kind of players who are going to be good enough to transform your results probably are also trying to get to the NFL and probably also you know, looking around at the Indiana facility and not seeing the same thing. So, You'd be, not to go all Connor Stallions on this, but like you'd be getting a very unique uh, prospect that is just coming for money and has so much self-confidence and belief that the NFL is going to find them wherever that they want to transform that with not the iron sharpens iron, highest caliber of teammate, but that they want to be on the forefront. Like it's a... But you know what you do? What? By the way, I think we all know a GM uh, uh, that could maybe you know be willing to leave his current job, come help us out, evaluate the talent. When I say spend money, I don't think you're talking about four and five stars. Like I just think you have mm-hmm. to come up with that expectation of we're yeah. not going to be spending with Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State, but we can spend those three right star guys that are on and the, exactly yeah. and Minnesota, keep, Iowa, yeah, and mm-hmm. keep our in house talent, Nebraska. Like you can keep your in house talent, go get some guys, win some of those battles. 
and get a much more competitive roster than, you know, spending all that money on a head coach. I'm going to tweet right now that the sources close to me are indicating that the two top names for the Indiana job are John Gruden and Danny Cannell. <laughs> so go. anybody watching right now will understand what this is. If you Can't don't confirm oh, everyone, else. <laughs> <laughs> everyone else would think this is nuts. We're, we're going to have revenue sharing. So that's the thing. Later. Yeah. Like it's coming like the smart team in the NFL. What, what's the breakdown of player salary pool versus coach salary pool? 51. Uh, it's like 50, 51. It's like right at 50. Wait, really? what? No, there's no way that, that coaches make the same as players do. Oh, oh, I thought you were talking about the revenue split between no, not players with the and owners. Mm-hmm. NFL, it's got to yeah, be like 90-10, right? Or, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. or 95-5? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Close to that. Maybe 80-20. Because well, NFL well, salaries for yeah, coaches have been They're rising. up to like 200 yeah. million for the, each team. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we'll, we're going to get to a spot where players combined as a roster make more than coaches do. And, and and this conversation we're having here will will seem you know pretty pretty tame in comparison to where we're going to get. But right now it seems kind of extreme, and, and there's still kind of a stigma of paying players as opposed to paying coaches or, or putting your money into facilities. But you got to fire coaches all the time. Like coaches bust just as often as players do. You know, you know who would make sense for Indiana in all seriousness? Sean Lewis would make a lot of sense for Indiana. Yeah, it's an it's an identity. He played at Wisconsin. He knows the Big Ten. He coached in the MAC, so he's familiar with the territory. He knows the kind of players. Like the difference to start with, like you you want to get better. But as far as recruiting goes, a lot of the guys you're getting in the MAC are the same kind of guys Indiana needs to be finding at this point because you're not going to be you know taking things from Notre Dame, Michigan, Ohio State. So yeah, that would make sense.